Hello everyone, I'm Chris Mozillo, Servosun, and this is an indie look at Subsurface Circular. Subsurface Circular is a small little indie game created by Mike Bithell, the man who created both Thomas Was Alone as well as Volume. At this point I feel like I'm one of the few people in the world who hasn't ever actually spoken to the man himself, or at least I was. Yes, that was just a small brag, if you could call it that. The game is a robo-mystery that takes place on the titular subspace circular, which is a train line on a in a big city. It's a very short game, so there's no real need to beat around the bush, and let's just dive right in! Uh, dive right in? Dive right in. The game opens with this really cool robo sequence that had me more feeling like I was about to have sex with a robot than actually solve any robo crime. Oh, yeah. Although maybe that was just me. Although robots are sexy. Uh, I mean, they've got really cool designs. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're designs. Hey there, handsome. Do you want some of this? While on your never-ending commute, you're approached by a robot who claims their friend has gone missing and begs you for their assistance for what you know as luck would have it. You're a robot detective. Taking on the missing person's case, you delve into this world of robots and trains to try and solve the mystery of the missing robot, all while learning of what may be bubbling below the surface. On your sit-down adventure, you'll be coming across a whole variety of robots, all with their own unique personalities and designs. There's this mixture of normal everyday conversation with soulless analytics that makes these robots you interact with so interesting. While the robots all seemingly have complete self-awareness, there are some who have lower intelligence than other robots, such as yourself who is a robot with higher level of intelligence due to their job as a detective, requiring some form of abstract thoughts. There's such an odd dichotomy of robots that'll have a normal everyday conversation with you, but then at the same time are almost programmed to know their place in society, and are in full acceptance of their inherent disadvantage that stops some robots from being able to talk at all, let alone others which are programmed to speak exclusively in advertisements. It's these sort of difficulties that will have you working through some simple puzzles, such as getting a code to strip a robot's personality away, you need to then interact with those around you to get it. They're never exactly challenging, but these little puzzles can be a fun enough of a distraction to break up the talking, and some of them even require a little bit of working out. There's one moment where I was taking actual physical notes on like what I was doing in order to work out this little puzzle that I actually felt like an, a real detective. A real robot detective. Which was basic, my dear Robo Watson. Well, you see, the Robo Hound was none other than a mere Robo Man. Shut up, Robo Holmes, and kiss me. Oh, oh my! Oh, oh my! Oh my! Oof. There are a host of themes and connotations at play here in such a small game that relates to the real world itself. There's this inherent classism that runs through these robots in knowing their place and how they interact with this idea of higher and lower intelligence robots, as well as this idea of robots kind of not knowing what's going on around them, but willfully so. As a greater mystery lurks in the shadows, slowly coming to boil, some you talk to will be interested and share as much as they can. Others will try to not get involved as much as possible as they'd rather just live in their own isolated world. They believe that ignorance is bliss, even when something so important is happening, which is something very reflective of modern human society. Ultimately, what you get is a delightful little mystery game that's more of a visual novel than anything else, but has such fun and wonderful characters that I've really enjoyed talking to a lot of them. There are some incredibly dark undertones that race through the entire game, such as this idea that you can strip away a robot's entire personality, reducing them down to nothing more than a, an unsexy robot, and it leaves such an uneasy feeling in you whenever you do use it, and just having the, the option always there waiting for you. Not only are the robots themselves so wonderfully realised and have great characters that I want to actually talk to them all this fucking time, 
but the world building that they take part in builds up to this wonderful ending that still has me thinking about it and wondering about what I did and what I didn't do, even to this day. I don't spoil the game too much, it's ultimately roughly about 3 hours of visual novel, but after I finished the game I was kind of sat at my desk staring into space not doing anything for about a good 10 minutes, just thinking. And I think that's quite brilliant. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. If you have any more thoughts about Subspace Circular yourself, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, maybe even like or heck, maybe even subscribe. There'll be a more in-depth review where I talk possibly more about the, the themes and the like in the description below. And anyway, thank you and goodbye.